Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to this edition of The Making of a Negro Slave, Path 1. Important notice, it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with our videos. Our videos may not be what you want to hear, hence we encourage you to research them yourself. Thank you. And to our donors, we say thank you. Remember, you too can support us at paypal.me forward slash ourrenaissance or patreon.com forward slash ourrenaissance. Thank you. Never allow a house negro to keep you from saying what is real and true. That's their job. It is their job to pacify you, shut you up for massa. Malcolm X. Please permit us to ask you the following questions. Have you ever heard the term biscuit headed? Have you ever researched it yourself? Have you ever wondered why you go to school? And why you finish school? but never finish church, mosque or synagogue and indeed why you go to church every Sunday or mosque every Friday or synagogue every Saturday but you never graduate, there is no time they say you have finished. Year after year, generation and after generation, you are always saddled with that responsibility. Have you ever wondered why and how it all started? Have you ever wondered how you got the religion you practice as a negro or black person how your forefathers got the religion they handed down to you or where the doctrines of the religions you follow were gotten from and when and do you go to church every sunday and mosque every friday or synagogue every saturday to be reminded of the laws of the creator of heaven and earth or is it to learn the laws of the creator of heaven and earth? Or is it because you forgot what you were told the week before? Have you researched the Willie Lynch letter of 1712 and the use of fear, distrust and envy for control? This is our challenge to you. And if a pastor after a few years has enough money to buy an aeroplane, how many aeroplanes do you think the slave masters could have bought from Negroes since they embraced the religion. So we expect your response to the challenge in the comment section and we hope you don't believe the money to buy the jets were sent to them by the Most High Creator of Heaven and Earth or by God as they want you to believe. So please if you have the answers to those challenges, we will want you to provide them to us in the comment section. Thank you. Let us now reference the Willie Lynch letter, The Making of a Slave, December 25th, 1712. We see where it tells us that, Gentlemen, you know what your problems are. I do not need to elaborate. I am not here to enumerate your problems. I am here to introduce you to a method of solving them. In my bag here, I have a foolproof method for controlling your black slaves. I guarantee every one of you that if installed correctly, it will control the slaves for at least 300 years. In bracket 2012, my method is simple. Any member of your family or your overseer can use it. I have outlined a number of differences among the slaves and make the differences bigger. I use fear, distrust and envy for control. Have you ever found time to study this letter yourself? Have you even ever heard about it? You probably have heard the word lynch. Have you ever heard how they got the word lynch? That's from this same Willie Lynch. The lynch, when they say they lynch a thief, that's where they got it from. So if you have never found time to study it yourself, do you now understand why they say the best way to hide something from an African is to write it down in a book? So if we look further down in this same letter, we see where it tells us how to make a slave. Let us make a slave. What do we need? First of all, we need a black negro man. Remember we just avoided the n-word 
for obvious reasons, a pregnant Negro woman and her baby Negro boy. Second, we will use the same basic principle that we use in breaking a horse combined with some more sustaining factors. What we do with horses is that we break them from one form of life to another. That is, we reduce them from their natural state in nature whereas nature provides them with the natural capacity to take care of their offspring we break that natural string of independence from them and thereby create a dependency status so that we may be able to get from them useful production for our business and pleasure note for our business and pleasure it didn't say for everybody for themselves only so you need to understand this and further down it says therefore if you break the female mother she will break the offspring in its early years of development and when the offspring is old enough to work she will deliver it up to you for her normal female protective tendencies will have been lost in the original breaking process for example take the case of the wild stud horse a female horse and an already infant horse and compare the breaking process with two captured negro males in their natural state a pregnant negro woman with her infant offspring take the stud horse break him for limited containment so here you see exactly where the game was hatched so our question to you is have you ever wondered how our women or negro women got the idea of changing their hair to look like the slave master's hair have you ever wondered how it all started and took over all of them this is not a case of some it's just like a natural thing so you see that they were previously at the natural state but in the present state of slavery they have to follow and run with their master and that way they cascade that thing whatever thing they have put in them in the breaking process into their offspring and that is why you see what you see today so if you have never taken time to study these later in details have you ever taken time to connect the dots between the religions they brought you and other religions practiced all over the world different from the slave masters religion if you have never done that we challenge you to try and do that yourself it is better you do it yourself come up with answers yourself rather than saying oh we said or someone else said the best we can do is to show you where they are documented because the good thing about the slave master is he tells you what he plans to do in advance knowing that the average negro will not read that's the basic thing you need to know about the slave master so and here we see where it tells us that for fear of the young male's life she will psychologically train him to be mentally weak and dependent but physically strong and this brings us to the question to you today are you mentally weak but physically strong are you mentally dependent but physically strong have you tried to understudy why you have to be in church mosque or synagogue every week to be reminded of something perhaps a law you don't even keep you have no plans to keep and will never keep but your money changes hands in those places our question to you today is are you mentally weak but physically strong but let us still move forward so you understand what we're saying and we recommend that you look for these materials and study them yourself very simple let us reference the journal of negro history volume 11 july 1926 number three the negro in the reconstruction of virginia religious efforts among the negroes before the civil war the religion of the slave was commonly that of his owner the master class regarded an independent religious system for the blacks inconsistent with slavery note that line very well confirmed in this opinion by the early 19th century insurrectionary movements led by gabriel prosser and nath thunner supposedly a negro preacher the virginians enacted laws prohibiting assemblages of negro for religious worship conducted by their own ministers so now ask yourself 
why were they afraid of religious gatherings by their own ministers at that time so when you take time to find answers for that question then you would have started understanding what the situation is today it goes further to say this action brought the religious instruction of the slaves under the strict supervision of the pro-slavery churches of the whites who nevertheless permitted large groups of urban negroes to worship in separate churches directed by white ministers but the rural negroes generally worshipped in the master's church where they occupied a segregated section during the regular services or worshipped in meetings held especially for the blacks so again we ask you if what they were telling you was the truth and you are told by their book that the truth you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free why didn't this truth set them free at that time that's our question for you and you are welcome to put it in the comment section so you see what the whole thing is all about so they go and incorporate whatever thing they want into the law of the state or the community or the country as it were and that is the tools of the slavery the reason you won't understand this is because you don't use your own brain you just follow your master you listen to what they are saying an average negro will believe what he had ahead of what he is reading you can see this easily from the bible or the quran if you read them you will discover that what they are saying are totally different from what the people that are bringing them are telling you you will notice this is very simple the moment you drop whatever they have told you and study those books yourself and use the brains the most high has blessed you with you will discover that what the books are even saying are totally different from what they are telling you so but we have seen that they make the slavery a part of the state law and this is still in practice in sub-saharan africa till tomorrow morning by a different group against the negroes which we shall look at in subsequent editions let us reference the code of virginia including legislation to the year 1860 and it was published in 1860 and there we see the following the general assembly shall not grant a charter of incorporation to any church or religious denomination but may secure the title to church property to an extent to be limited by law this allows them control so you couldn't have created your own religion or church as a descendant of former slave your question should become what is their interest is this the law of the creator of heaven and earth or the law of man these are questions you are expected to answer perhaps in the comment section and then you explain to us how the book you read is related to the creator of heaven and earth so on the other side of the page you see where it even says that taxation shall be equal and uniform throughout the commonwealth and all property other than slaves shall be taxed in proportion to its value which shall be ascertained in such manner as may be prescribed by law every slave who has attained the age of 12 years shall be assessed with a tax equal to and not exceeding the assessed on land of the value of three hundred dollars slaves under that age shall not be subject to taxation and other taxable property may be exempted from taxation by the vote of a majority of the whole number of members elected to each house of the general assembly so we just want to see tell you that religion and slavery and slave trade are one and the same and which we shall show you as we go along and in subsequent editions you may be one of those that may have been deceived by the latest iteration of the narrative of the slave master and the slave trade that slavery was ordained for the negroes as a punishment from the most high creator of heaven and earth this is not true the reason they are telling that lie is because they understand that the negro is very religious and all you need is to convince him that whatever you are saying is coming from the creator of heaven and earth he will believe you and accept that as his faith or his lot so you may have noticed some places where they put names claiming that the slaves had names that ended in ya or something like ya like that we had shown in previous series that yeah didn't exist at that time it was aya and above all 
Negroes are known to bear names that have meanings. They don't bear names that are vague. Yeah, had no meanings. And is it English or is it in the original Greek or Hebrew that the language the um, Bible was written in that they were getting Yah from? So you see that it doesn't hold water. The only reason is if they convince the Negroes that their punishment is coming from the Most High, they are gonna stay in that same position where they are, believing that there will be some day when the Most High will come from above to come and liberate them. That's actually what it is. And you remember Karl Marx told us that religion is the opium of the masses. It is that opium that they are giving you by these religions. So it keeps you down in such a way that you will be thinking that it is what the Most High ordained for you, which is not true. So let us look at a little document that gives us an idea that this couldn't have been true. Let us look at survivors from the cargo of the Negro slave yacht Wanderer by Charles J. Montgomery with a note by Frederick Starr. It was published around 1906. So our interest is where it tells us that it may be recalled that the year 1858 when this yacht sailed across the Atlantic with the only cargo that is ever secured was little more than half a century after the importation of slaves into the United States had been prohibited by Congress and at a time when it was treated as piracy by civilized nations, especially by Great Britain and this country, that's the United States. During this period, however, numbers of vessels were engaged illegally in the African slave trade, frequently crossing the Atlantic from the shores of some of our enterprising maritime states to obtain cargoes from the African coast at the risk of seizure and confiscation of the vessels so engaged. So our interest here is for you to see that even after the US banned slavery or importation of Negroes from Africa, some illegal trading still continued so that those that believe that oh it stopped in 1807 this we are later will understand what we're talking about so we're going to show you one or two little things that should tell you that the narrative of the so-called ya yeah or aya yeah is a very big lie and further down we see where it tells us that returning to the negroes themselves the question suggests itself from what part of africa did they come and what tribe did they represent it is known that the cargo was obtained near the mouth of the congo but they must have been collected there from different tribes living in different parts of the continent. Remember we told you that the slaves were not from Ghana. If you notice, most of the DNA tests are not coming from uh, showing that the descendants are from Ghana. It's showing elsewhere. This should tell you what is going on. They captured the slaves from elsewhere. That the slave forts were in Ghana does not mean that the slave came from Ghana. Bear this in mind as well. This is very important. So, but our interest is where it says, it is said that some could not understand the language of other Negroes in the group. Their complexion and to some extent, their physiognomy and their size varied considerably. So our interest is where it says they could not understand the languages. Now, if somebody is telling you that the name of the creator of heaven and earth was Yah, because some Negroes were saying something that looked like that. So where is it getting that from? If you notice that it is not the same language. So if the language is varied, does it mean they had yeah common among them? The answer is no. The Negroes did not have religion. They had a way of life. Yes, truly they worshipped the creator of heaven and earth. And the only thing common among them was how they worshipped him. Which for which they were called pagans, and not that they had this ya or aya that it was. It, it it gives a clear picture because if you look at the Tower of Babel story, whether real or imagined, whether true or false, you will discover that each group will certainly have a different name from the Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. So there is no way they can each have the same name, and that is why you see that each of the Negro communities had different names for the creator of heaven and earth so it's not for anyone to come and deceive you with aya or ya or whatever thing they call it the reason that thing is growing is because the slave master understands that if you buy into it and believe it then it allows them to leave you in the same condition you have been because you would think it is ordained by the creator of heaven and earth real or imagined that's actually why that's 
theory is being propagated and you are believing it so we will go further to show you other reasons why that ir theory cannot be true so here it says finally how many survivors of that memorable voyage across the atlantic yet remain after 47 years in a foreign land and we see the four people they used at least their images should show who they are and again they don't have their real names now the reason you should understand that there is no way the slave masters can have the real names of the slaves is because they were mostly women and children they were captured from a foreign land whose languages they didn't know so how could they have gotten their names some babies some were born in the slave ship some of the people were not even understanding what the slave masters were saying because this was a hunt at that time the slave masters that's the muslims the jews the arabs believed that the negroes were beasts akin to cattle so how could they have gotten their names which language were they speaking communicating with to have gotten their names so that again tells you that the ayah story or yeah or those stories do not hold any water they are lies they are just using it to make sure that the negroes remain docile remain in the state of servitude and continue to enjoy the slavery as though there will be someday when the almighty creator of heaven and earth will come down and say oh no stop whereas he had given us all the weapons all the things we need which is our brains to combat servitude so that's why we want to show you the picture of those people based on this document at least you can go ahead and do your own research as well you can at least see that their names are the names of whoever was their owners or a new name given to them by the slave masters remember these people are usually captured as women and children mostly and men who were weak because those that resist are usually killed or murdered and remember it is the armies the what you call the armed forces in south saharan africa today that actually did the raiding and capturing the reason they don't tell you that is because they are still working with the slave masters so they won't tell you that those are the people that did it if you check by simple common sense no one else even has that capacity except them as well that's why we showed you where the virginia law was made to reflect the wishes of the slave masters so that should tell you what happens what they do so you would think it is the law of the land at that time the law of the land was to export slaves and that was what they were doing in sub-saharan africa so the armies you see uh, now tell us if we may ask you between a country like nigeria cameroon gabor ghana all of them tell us who the army is protecting people from a country like nigeria will have a 200,000 strong army paying them wasting money but there's nothing they do other than murdering innocent people because that was the same slave raiding terror group that was the institution all they need was to re-engineer the institution of slavery and slave trade and then say oh this is the army protecting you from what from who how so the moment you identify the moment you become free from the yoke one of the things you will discover is who the enemy within is and you will find them very easily they are still doing their stuff till today you won't hear it in the united nations because they are all part of the same conspiracy against the negroes you won't hear it in au if you are an african-american why not begin to ask yourself when someone like uh, professor gates is going to look for where the slaves were sold from he always runs to ghana but when you do a dna it normally comes out with sierra leone liberia and places like the bite of biafra and benin and sometimes they tell you that the slave would have been from nigeria but they won't tell you the name of the place before it was named nigeria because nigeria was just a nickname it was a byword it was never the name of the area so these are things you have to start looking at you have to start using your brains to understand what they are doing let us move forward and here you see where they got one of the slaves that survived this treacherous yacht to build a replica of the houses they had back in their home places so you again see the other view of it and here you see some words and meanings from the language of the negroes they could get so now tell us how they could have gotten their names it will be ending in yeah so that you stop believing that thing there is no way the most high could have created you to be slaves to anybody 
and we shall explain that in subsequent editions very well show you how they coded the same thing into the bible that you study so you see where it says a few words and an occasional sentence authored by these africans in their native tongue remnants of a language cherished in memory after so many years of practical disuse will here be given it may be noted that occasionally a single word has two or more distinct meanings in other instances two or more words express practically the same thing the language or the dialect of distinct tribes differed to a greater or less extent the following are selections from the vocabulary of the subjects of this sketch so our interest is for you to see their their languages we had shown you previously from this same documentation that many of them they didn't hear what others were saying so that should tell you that the negroes were not all the same people they had diverse races which uh, divert languages which was recorded by the slave masters again so there is no way yeah could have been so common amongst them so you understand the deceit in that yeah story and you will notice that some of most of these african americans or so-called african americans do not even know that there are different people in africa they think it's all about the same thing they don't even ask oh all these wars what is going on you will see people like professor gates paid to come and deceive people he always runs to ghana he never remembers the slave coast where Badagri is. He never remembers the Bight of Biafra where the bulk of the slaves came from. So you understand what we're talking about. But let us move forward. Let us also reference the fugitive slave circulars or England, the protector of the Negro slave, a letter to the Baroness Burdett Cuts by Edward Hutchinson and it was published in 1876. And there we see the following. In the highlighted portion secondly that he shall be instructed in the truths of the christian religion in order that he may be baptized before the expiration of the second year of his apprenticeship thirdly that he shall be vaccinated as soon as possible after having been delivered into the charge of the master that in sickness he shall have proper medical advice and shall be treated with due care and attention and that in the case of whatever but our interest is you see that they will be instructed in the truths or so-called truths of the christian religion remember this is freed slaves at the time of being freed they are now to be instructed with the truth of christian religion and then they have to be vaccinated our question to you is how were they living without the vaccinations remember from equiano they rarely had any sicknesses so now, how come they are now to be vaccinated? And before they were vaccinated, how come they were also immune to the sicknesses? And the slave master didn't worry about his own sicknesses, which contrary to today, a child born is uh, vaccinated. And remember, there is no research anywhere that shows you the effect, real or imagined, of those vaccines on the children that they were being given to in sub-Saharan Africa and of course we don't have scientists there we just have a bunch of lackeys who are just uh, beholden to the slave masters so whatever you bring you can imagine where a murderous group like the nigerian army was offering vaccines as its celebration of its 150 years that should tell you that they are still doing the bidding of their master because the army doesn't do any other thing other than killing people so why will the same army be immunizing people when its own duty is to kill people because that's what the armies in sub-saharan africa were doing during the slave trade that's what they are doing till today as well but let us still move forward let us reference christian missions or a manual of missionary geography and history by the reverend ct blonheath principal of the Brazil missionary institution edited by the reverend c bath dd of Wittenberg. And it was published in 1799 or thereabouts so there we see the following its tributaries are the country of the Ayos or Ibos and Yoruba the native country of many liberated Negroes in Sierra Leone where they are known by the name of Akos so you see what we told you remember we told you clearly that Bishop Samuel Crowder was never Yoruba he was a negro not yoruba yorubas are negroid 
so this is why you see the yorubas are always walking in hand in hand with the fulanese because they are part of the conquest you don't see the yorubas talking about their brothers outside nigeria that's because they are part of the conquest so but let us move forward to show you what we are talking about and it says the negroes from this country were in johnson's time the wildest and most dissolute they could not be restrained even under any military discipline and yet at that time they became transformed by the gospel into lambs in these converted accos that was now awakened a longing to carry the gospel to their fatherland they therefore purchased in 1840 a condemned slave ship with which they sailed with a white man to conduct them to badagri on the slave coast so badagri is in the slave coast you can see from here but when people like professor gates are coming to show where the slave trade happened they will head to ghana because that's where elmina castles were the castles were just holding facilities just like way houses they were never where the slaves were gotten from secondly if you look at badagri you will notice that the media even in nigeria do not even mention it often that's because they don't want people to even be aware of the atrocities of the past because the negroes are still being enslaved being subjugated and being murdered daily by the non-negroes so if you look at what is happening in the middle belt of nigeria today they shout they cry but of course the slave master knows who his uh, foot soldiers are they turn the other way and unfortunately the negroes in the diaspora are busy shouting how they are african african where their kit and kin are being murdered some of them even make the mistake of coming back to africa without finding out where they are going whether they are going to where their brothers are or they are going to the enemy so you see that those that were shipped back to sierra leone we are predominantly people of the Ayos or Ibos as they call them and of the Yoruba country which we have told you shown you that it was the Baz, not really Yorubas that were being captured. Let us reference the lost continent its rediscovery and recovery by Edward Hutchinson and it was published in 1879 by the Church Missionary Society. There we see the following from the highlighted portion and the second paragraph down it says the slave trade has now existed more than three centuries and within that period according to a careful french writer more than 50 millions of slaves have been taken from africa the responsibility for the crimes and horrors which these figures represent must rest in the first instance upon the christian nations of europe who introduced the system into africa so you see clearly that you can't separate christianity islam and judaism from slavery and the slave trade however you try you can only try but you can't make any progress unless to someone who is ignorant of the history and the facts of history so now you see the number given over 50 million but let us read further down you see what we are talking about sabato Freire in the blue book presented to the house of parliament in 1873 states that the correspondence of the central african vicariat apostolic expends over countries roughly estimated at having a population of 80 million of negroes between the red and arabian seas note red and arabian seas on the east and the atlantic on the west and the annual drain consequent on slavery is estimated by the superior of the mission at 1 million. Dr. Livingstone calculated that not more than one slave in five arrived at his destination and on some routes not one in nine. So what that means is that out of every five slaves not more than one will arrive alive in their dest uh, destination or to the destination or to the new world and in some cases not one in nine so this should tell you the casualty rate so when they tell you anything like africans so other africans that's a lie you should begin to ask yourself why are they interested in telling you africans so other africans without telling you who in africa did that should be your question then since they are not telling you the onus is on you is incumbent on you to find out who did because there is no way 
a human being can sell another human being just like that without the force of military might and remember they also told you that the negroes were naked and living on trees so how did they come down to start capturing 400 people 500 people to fill a slave ship again we we'll tell you the armed forces of those west african countries were the slave raiding terror groups they just rebranded them if you think the army for example the nigerian army the Ghanaian army the korean army is protecting you or doing anything for you we challenge you to tell us how that's our challenge to you because we know that that's who they are we had shown you it's documented is it research based they are the slave raiding terror groups rebranded and that's why they don't talk about it you will notice that even the u.s government the british government they will never mention the killings going on there because they are behind it we challenge you to do your own research conduct your own research don't listen to what they tell you do your own research and find out what they are not telling you and from the book we referenced earlier that told us how the gospel transformed those that could not be restrained through military force to lambs we see where it says they have been used to fill one ship after another to pack five or six hundred negroes together in the narrowest possible space bound close to one another in rows allowing them only five feet in length to lie upon and two feet for the height of the deck above them in these sewers during the voyage there has regularly died we need not say how miserable a death the proportion of seven to every hundred and often nearly half the cargo the survivors were sold at high price on the other side so we still repeat and tell you that there was nothing like trade in sub-saharan africa in what was negro land and guinea it was a raid a war a razia razia is the islamic word for slave raid so they captured the slaves nobody sold anything to them why not ask yourself you that is listening to this how somebody will say oh i've sold you and you start walking and following the man he has sold you to that was the narrative to make it look like the negroes were actually animals so if you look at it very well you see that it is impossible for an african chief to have done it remember we showed you the model of the house they lived in the reason we did that is for you to show us when they tell you that oh no the africans were enslaving themselves already we came to save them if one person has 10 or 20 slaves he should have 10 or 20 houses to keep them that should tell you that it's a lie and if you notice africans are a bit on the subsistence side they don't have wholesale mindset so if you don't know any company that an african a negro formed that had 200 or 300 employees tell us how the same negro chief could have captured 500 people to fill a slave ship we had shown you several instances of where the europeans captured the slaves themselves we have shown you the records of the books where the arabs did it themselves we have shown you all the records that prove that it couldn't have been the negroes and even by the most basic of common sense there is no way the negroes could have because if you were let's say you have a community of five thousand people and you capture one thousand today how many will you capture tomorrow how many will you capture the next day and for 400 years and again you saw where we saw how many centuries the slave trade had lasted that should tell you that the so-called 400 years being claimed by some people of 2019 is not true because if by 1797 or uh, 1897 or 96 thereabout it was already 300 years it's all way past 400 years already and it started 1434 anyway so their 400 years doesn't work it makes them think that these negroes were only those sold to the u.s they call the u.s spiritual egypt so what of those sold to brazil what of those sold to europe what of those in the caribbeans what of those to the middle east to turkey to saudi arabia where they were used in harams and you can see a clue to that slavery in the bible where the ethiopian eunuch was talked about remember where they call niger delta in nigeria today used to be known as ethiopia so now if you can imagine the ethiopian eunuch that means that was a castrated negro a castrated slave and remember they were using them in harams in the middle east so when they come today to tell you how islam forbids slavery you should know that you have seen a liar or how christianity was not for it you also see that 
that's a liar so we thank you very much for listening and we do hope you will find time to conduct your own research look for the materials referenced and study them yourself that is why you need your brains that is why they will lynch later told you that it's gonna use fear to make slaves and remember when you go to church on sundays mosque on fridays and synagogue on saturdays what is that thing that they are going to teach you that they've not taught you before could it be that you had forgotten what they taught you the week before or have you been able to relate your presence in church mosque or synagogue to the money you put there the now is the time to ask now is the time to use your brains and know whether you are keeping the commandments of the most high or you are keeping the commandments of man the commandments of the slave master who has told you that you will go to hell if you don't come to church whereas he doesn't go he doesn't even come he doesn't keep any of the laws but you will be the one to go to hell if you don't come to his church or his mosque or his uh, synagogue to contribute your hard-earned money for him we thank you very much for listening and we do hope you will find time to conduct your own research peace